Welcome to Movie Mayhem here at Superior Works Cinema, where we watch all the movies. Here we have the first installment in our director series on the Lucio Fulci. Um, I was asked why I hadn't done one on him, simply because I, I wasn't really sure where to start. Um, so we're going to start with the last Lucio Fulci film I watched. This is the brand new Arrow Blu-ray of The Black Cat. Um, this came with a, uh, uh, the other disc. Ah, oh, I forgot it. I believe it's Martino's Black Cat ripoff. But anyway, this, uh, so it, it's based on the Edgar Allan Poe story. Um, this is not the best movie to start your, uh, Fulci diving into with if you haven't watched Fulci films. Now, Fulci has a very interesting career, and that's why his director series, I, I think, is going, at least for me, even watching it, is very exciting and interesting. The, the, if you, ha if you haven't seen his filmography, just go on IMDb and you'll realize you probably have only heard of about 10% of the movies he's made. And that's because he, he got really popular in outside of Italy with his horror stuff, but he's done so many non-horror movies. Um, White Fang, great uh, action-adventure type of movie, and then a ton of comedies he did, and and several more in, the, in that vein, and they're good. They're very good films. Um, so... Fulci is not the hack director that he's kind of made out to be. I think that was something, it's like, well, the end of his career, he was kind of known as being an alcoholic, and he kind of made some trash just to make money. But you got to think, the guy had already had a 40-plus year of directing movies by that point, and I think he lost a lot of the, the uh, credibility he should have had. I remember when he uh, died that year, and the Oscars did their montage, everybody died, they ignored him. And... That was actually the last year I watched the Oscars. So, it gives you any opinion of what I think of that kind of, those award shows. But, I mean, to me, that was such a snub in the face of a man who was so prolific and so important within his own culture and for the history of film in general. To, to ignore him was, it was shameful. So, yeah, no more about that. But, The Black Cat. Uh, this is a great transfer. Looks cool. Uh, best I've seen Black Hat, of course. It's it's a, a twisted version of the Black Cat. I mean, there's been so many adaptations of this story. The, the main principles are there. The hiding in the wall and the cat being there, blah, blah, blah. Honestly, I, you know, I find it, Fulci's version probably to be one of the less bleak and gruesome adaptations. And it's it's... Uh, it, it centers around, you're led to believe a cat is effectively murdering people, which would be awesome in its own right. And the cat kind of does. This cat has claws made of, like, steel. I don't understand how he does it. Some good gore, and it's just a black cat basically murdering people. But really, there's, dude, uh, the guy that owns the cat has the ability to do mind control, and throughout the thing... You're, you're, you don't know whether is it the cat controlling him or him controlling the cat. So it's kind of a neat twist. It's, it's, a, it's an interesting look for Fulci, too. It, it felt very Hammer-esque, which Fulci's films don't usually have that vibe. And, and I felt that the whole way through watching it, going, wow, this feels kind of like a Hammer film, like it was shot on their back lot or something, which, which works really well for this. Um, he's got a couple British actors, too, so it, it lends itself to that. I... You know, it, <laughs> he had me sold as just a cat killing people. Uh, I, you know, I will say one thing. Uh, you know, this is in his mid-horror era. And Frizzy didn't do the music. I think the music's lacking in this one. It's kind of why... You're not going to probably see this on most people's uh, Fulci's favorite list at all. Because it's okay. It's just okay. I mean, it's a fun film. I totally enjoyed watching it again. But... It's just okay, you know? I may watch it every once every three or four years. I'm not going to go in and, like, oh, man, you got to see this one. So it, it's this is a good transfer. I mean, this I guess they're going to release these individually. Currently, they're only in that box set. But, I mean, this is, again, for if you want a Fulci collection, you know, you gotta have got to have this. He's got so few on Blu-ray, really, that it, it's worth getting them all. Um, I know uh, Don't Torture the Duckling came out, but I think the subtitles are forced on that, so... Hopefully somebody else will buy the rights and put it out without four subs. This this is just an, a fun... It's a fun film. I mean, I... I don't want to bash it, because it, it, honestly, it's... 
if you want to view it as far as probably one of the weaker Black Hat adaptations, because it's just silly on a lot of counts. But it's cool. Um, I don't know where we're going to go next with Fulci. I I'd like to really dive into some of his more uh, less talked about ones, uh, skipping uh, skipping over the beyond for a while, and I want to come back to that. I just recently watched that, so I kind of want to get back to that and, and circle around just to give a, a more breadth of, of his work before we get to the really uh, obvious ones. So, there's Black Cat. I haven't seen it. Uh, you know, I think it's worth watching. Uh, one of his definitely lower end ones. But, you know, if you're a fan of Poe, you gotta see all of the all the variations on the Black Cat story. I think they're well worth it. I think my favorite's still probably gonna be Dario's as far as uh, from Two Evil Eyes. I think that was probably the coolest one. Um, anyway, there you go. So, uh, let me know if you've seen Black Cat and what you think, and we'll see you here next time in Movie Mayhem.